Okay guys, we are back working on the Miata. Uh, in this episode, we're really gonna focus on transitioning from our cosmetic upgrades that we've done in the past, now to performance on the car. And so with that in mind, the 1.6 liter engine needs to come out. Pulling an engine out isn't a simple feat. It's definitely one of the bigger tasks that we'll show you guys on this YouTube channel. So it is a lot of work to get that engine and transmission out of the car. We've split this into two episodes. We are going to have the engine prepped for removal in this episode. All the electrical systems, everything up on top removed. And then the next episode, we'll show you everything underneath the car that you have to do and physically pulling the engine transmission out of the car. First thing we're gonna do is get all the fluids drained. So drain the engine coolant, drain the engine oil, and then I think we'll drain the transmission fluid as well to prevent making a big mess when we pull the engine and transmission out as an assembly. So we'll get to showing you guys that first. We're gonna do just the Phillips uh, drain plug bolt here. I'm gonna undo this clamp and separate the coolant hose while we're down here so that we can just get the radiator right out. Okay, that's pretty much it for under here for right now. So first things first, always disconnect your battery. Located in the trunk, we wanna disconnect the negative terminal. Once the negative terminal is disconnected, tuck the wiring connector down somewhere where it won't just fold back on and connect on there. I'm just gonna take the hood prop rod right out of here. There we go. Once the clip is undone, fold this side out and then slide the rod right out of the clip. I'm gonna take the air intake off as a complete unit. Clamp down underneath the throttle body there. I think that goes to the uh, idle air control. Disconnect your mass airflow meter wiring harness connector. There's a metal spring clip that goes all the way around. If you just pop it off on both sides loosely, you can pull the connector off and then push them back together so you don't lose that spring clip. Somebody either broke the bolt or lost the clips on the bottom of the radiator. So there's like a kind of stupid setup on the NAs where it like sits in this in this weird housing. Kind of like it like sits in this like weird pocket with a stud on this side and the other side. And somebody's like tie wired it to the hanger down here. So they either lost the the bushing or the clip or something in there. So we'll eliminate that with the new radiator. Uh, right now, all we have to do is just pull the two top bolts for the radiator mount and then cut the tie wire that they've installed. So the top bolt, head bolt here, and then the same on the other side. You can see the radiator will tilt back and forth on the lower mount. So just because somebody tie wired ours, We'll just have to cut the tie wire and then the radiator should just lift right out. Last thing to undo is your fan connection. And so the electric fans, if your car has air conditioning, it will have a second fan on the passenger side. Ours has no AC, so we just have the one fan and there's just an electrical connector on this side here. The wiring off to the side and the fan will come off with the radiator. Um, there's gonna be two wiring harnesses. This one controls idle air control. There's a coolant temp sensor and then the power steering pressure sensor, I believe, on this side. So we'll get that wiring harness out. The other wiring harness is gonna be the injector and ignition harness. So it'll be on the back side of the engine. 
there and it'll run up for the fuel injectors, the coil pack, your cam angle sensor, those kind of items. So we'll get the wiring harness at the front out of the way and then we'll start pulling some of the accessories. I think we'll leave the alternator on the engine, but the power steering pump we're gonna take off and just kind of leave off to the side. We might actually delete power steering on this car while the engine is out and everything is apart. We're also gonna be doing a coolant reroute while the engine is out. And so what that does is from the factory, this engine was originally designed to be in a front wheel drive car. So Mazda relocated the coolant inlet from the radiator from the back of the engine where it would be in a front wheel drive car to the front of the engine. So both of your coolant inlet and outlet for the upper and lower radiator hoses, one is here and the other is down at the back of the water pump. What that did is it starved the back two cylinders from proper cooling. So what we're gonna do is while the car is apart, while the engine is out, we're gonna reroute that coolant inlet from the front of the engine and then it'll route from the upper radiator hose on the new aluminum radiator around the side of the engine and to the back side of the cylinder head. So we'll be doing that while the engine is out. We'll just install a block off plate to the front of the cylinder head and then we'll relocate that coolant temp sensor to that block off plate. So that'll really clean up the front of the engine as well. So this one looks like a pressure sensor on the power steering pump. So I think you just depress the tab on the connector here to pop it off of that power steering pressure sensor. Next, we'll come over to the engine coolant temperature sensor. Depress the locking tab on that one too. There is a little bracket, little bracket here that locates the one coolant hose and it mounts the uh, wiring harness to it. So I'm just gonna pull the 12 mil bolt and take that bracket right off. I believe this one here is the idle air control valve. So again, just depress your tab and work the plug off. This one has a metal clip in it. So if you just push that metal tab on both sides, then the wiring harness will just pull off and then push the tabs back in so you don't lose that clip for later. So there is a charcoal canister here related to the vacuum fuel delivery system. We're gonna delete that with the solenoid that goes with it, not necessary for our application. And then that'll give us the ability to tuck the engine wiring harness off to the side out of our way as well. So there's two hoses underneath the canister. One that goes to a steel hard line up near the front of the car and then one that goes to another steel hard line right beside the canister itself. Oh. Just gonna take this whole plastic clip right off the bracket. Now I'm gonna take the solenoid right off with this as one whole assembly. So we'll pull the 10 millimeter nut on the bracket, disconnect the wiring harness and take everything out as one go. I'm gonna undo the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the wiring harness bracket to the frame. Pull the engine wiring harness up through that location and then tuck it out of the way. Next, we'll disconnect the throttle cable and then the fuel feed and return lines here on the side of the engine. You index the throttle plate to wide open throttle and then you can just twist the cable to the open slot location and slide the cable out under the two 10 millimeter bolts from the intake manifold. So the throttle cable I flopped off to the side, I'm actually gonna try to reroute it a little bit better out of our way. Uh, there's just a couple little clips that it sits in on the a brake booster pipe. So I'm just gonna pop those off and then swing the whole throttle cable right over back to the driver's side to get it just completely out of the way. So then just depress the tab 
on the electrical connector for the alternator and then pull the connector right off. This is the engine oil pressure sensor. So you wanna just depress the tab and pull that connector off as well. This car used to have a block heater on it, apparently, and the wiring was left in there. So I'm just gonna cut that zap strap and then we'll pull the wiring harness back through. I'm gonna pull the vacuum line to the brake booster. This has a rubber line here that goes to a metal hard line right across. So if you remember, we installed a cappuccino windshield washer bottle and I utilized one of the bolt locations for the brake booster vacuum hose to mount the bottle to. So I need to just remove the nut so that I can then access or pull the bolt out from the engine bay side. pull the injector and the uh, ignition coil wiring harness out now. Mazda was pretty clever where they gave a break in the injector harness. Looks like it separates right here. So we'll disconnect that injector harness, pull this 10 millimeter nut off of the wiring mounting location, and then disconnect the ground wires from right here and then disconnect these three wiring harness connectors and that should separate our whole engine wiring harness now. That one is for the ignition coils. This one is for the oxygen sensor. And this last one is your cam angle sensor. Oh, there. Looks like there's one more bracket and then the wiring that goes to the starter down at the bottom there. So we'll need to get this 10 millimeter bolt out and then reroute the wiring harness for the starter. Here on the frame, this one's pretty rusty. On the back of the starter, way underneath the intake manifold, there's a rubber cover that will stop the starter positive terminal from grounding out or arcing on anything. So you gotta pull that cover back and that will expose, no, I think it's a 12 millimeter nut that's deep under there, even more so than we can get on film. Uh, so we'll disconnect that one nut and then there's one smaller wire, this one, that connects to the starter solenoid. That one's the signal from the ignition switch and it just pops off with one little connector tab on the wiring harness as well. So depress the wiring harness connector tab and pull the starter solenoid wire off. Okay, so I've got a very stubby 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench and that was kind of the only way that I could get in there. But really this is working by braille. I cannot see hardly the nut that I'm getting off. Once you've got it kind of two or three turns loose, usually because these have that rubber cover, the threads are pretty safe. So you can just get the rest of the nut off by hand and then slide the big wire right off. And then now back here, we can see what we're actually taking off. But man, is it deep in there. Okay, so now aside from fuel lines, engine mounts, and the transmission, the engine is pretty well free. If you remember uh, when we did the first gutted episode, we took the heater core right out. And so now on this side of the engine, we've got just a hose that loops the two heater hoses together. On your car, if you're pulling the engine out, you'll have to disconnect the heater core lines, which ordinarily would go into these two locations and the firewall. So we're gonna get the power steering pump and belt off now. So the adjuster is this kind of convoluted looking bracket here. So you have to loosen off the adjuster locking bolt here and then back off the adjuster and that will allow the pump to pivot and then you can pull the belt off. And then I think it's just one big bolt that goes through the pulley that you can access right there to get the pump right off. 
Okay, so we'll pull that locking nut loose. I'm gonna crack the mounting bracket loose as well. Just slack this one off. And then once you loosen the last bigger mounting bolt, the pump should just pivot over to be able to get the belt off. Actually, as you pry it away from the engine, that loosens the belt. So then I think I just gotta loosen that adjusting bolt a little bit more. Then you can just pull the belt right off. I like to always inspect the belt when you pull it off. If you flip the belt inside out and stress it that way in the grooves, if the belt is really badly worn, you'll see a lot of cracking in between the, the grooves on the belt. These ones aren't too bad, but we're gonna replace them anyway. So then to get the pump right off, I'm gonna pull the adjusting bolt right out and then keep the bracket all together as one. And then we'll disconnect the nut through the pulley all the way and then pull that bolt right off. So the bolt will spin all the way through. As you're loosening the nut, you need to have a wrench on the backside right underneath the exhaust manifold, holding that bolt still. So once you've got the nut off through the pulley, then you can slide the bolt all the way out of the bracket. Again, keep those two together so they don't get lost. And then I'll just pull the adjuster with the pry bar in between the pump and the bracket, you should be able to pop the pump out from there. And then again, like most of the stuff, that'll just hang off to the side, stay out of our way, and you don't have to drain the power steering system yet to pull the engine out. So this is what the lower radiator hose on a Miata looks like. Comes off the back of the water pump, goes to this frame mounted hose, and then it goes down to the bottom of the radiator. All of this is crap. These hoses here are like so hard and crusty. They're probably 30 years old. And this one you can see is starting to rust right through the hose. There's like flakes of metal that you can pick off with your fingers. Do not take your chances on something like this. Uh, overheating on an engine, blowing a coolant hose, something like that is one of the most common breakdowns that you can experience on track. We have a replacement one from Marua in Japan. It's a stainless steel pipe that goes there. So now that we've got the power steering pump and the lower radiator hose disconnected from the water pump, the engine is clear of all items holding it in the car except for the engine mounts down at the bottom. So once we're ready with the transmission and the drive shafts, all those items, then we'll disconnect the engine mounts and pull everything out as one unit out the front. We've got everything in the engine bay disconnected from the engine. We need to disconnect things like the exhaust, the drive shaft, the PPF that links the transmission to the rear diff to be able to free all that up to get the engine and the transmission out the front of the car. We'll show you those in part two of engine removal.